Prime Time Local News, serving the Lakeland and Midwest regions. Hello, happy Tuesday, everyone. Fresh off the long weekend. Welcome to. Are we all recovered, eh? Well, mostly. Some of us need to run around Bud yeah. Miller twice. Uh, well, no, there's too much snow, <laughs> and which is actually <laughs> affecting the farmers, and you're talking about oh, drying rain oh today. Oh, my gosh, that I don't know. Harvest was stalled, now like it's really stalled. Across Alberta, you're talking, what, just 40%? That uh, means about 60%. And on top of how do you dry grain, with, you need propane for that. Propane is, the demand for that is off the chart. Wow, well, okay, so we'll definitely take a look at that. And uh, Connor filling in for sports, and we have uh, Beyond the Boards today. Yeah, so just a look at Zach Ziegler's billet family. Like all junior players, they go through a billet family, so we get a closer look into their life. Awesome, yeah. we look forward to that. But first, we're going to toss it over to Elise for a look at your local news. Awesome, thank you so much, Michaela. The RCMP are warning the public about the dangers of fentanyl that may be circulating in Lloyd Minster. Police responded to multiple drug overdoses in the city this Thanksgiving weekend, one resulting in death and three others taken to hospital. RCMP are concerned this is a result of mixes of cocaine and fentanyl. After the one individual died, two others were found unresponsive and transported to hospital, with the third still responsive but displaying signs of medical distress. While the death is expected to be caused by a drug overdose, the police are working with the office uh, of the chief medical examiner to determine the exact cause. If you are concerned about your own or someone else's misuse of fentanyl or would like more information on drug use, contact Addiction and Mental Health 24-hour helpline at 1-866-332-2322. And with the fresh layer of snow coating Lloyd Minster, the RCMP are urging motorists to stay safe. Our Brett Holden has more. The snow has arrived here in the border city, which means keeping our cars running is back. But the RCMP say that doing so is not the best idea. So always in the winter months, uh, the RCMP and Lloyd Minister notice an increase in theft of motor vehicles due to the fact that a lot of... Uh, our citizens leave their vehicles running either with the keys in it or with the keys uh, not in it but a spare set in the car somewhere. And there are some steps that you can take to make sure your car is not stolen. Uh, we always encourage the public never leave your vehicle running um, outside of a business or your residence to warm it up uh, with the keys in it because somebody uh, un unfortunately will come around and see it and take your vehicle from you. But theft is not the only thing the RCMP are warning the public about. With the new fallen snow that's out there, please ensure that you're leaving five or ten minutes before you, you normally would in order to get somewhere safely without causing an accident. Uh, the roads are slippery and uh, we encourage all residents to abide by all the rules and drive with caution. Making sure that you are driving to the conditions can help with safe driving. So although it's 50 kilometers an hour speed limit throughout the city, go 30 or 40 if there's a lot of snow, a lot of ice. Um, watch for pedestrians, especially in the mornings and after school where little kids are running, playing in the snow really. Brett Holden, Primetime Local News. And look, listen and learn is this year's fire prevention campaign. Our Cassandra Hornsby has more on how to protect yourself and loved ones. Look where fires can happen, listen to your fire alarm and learn at least two safe routes out of your house. The local firefighters will be out in the community this week spreading the message by visiting schools during the day. This is an important week for us to get out and talk to the public and the community and the youth in the schools to prevent uh, fires happening. In the evening on Tuesday and Wednesday, there will be a residential home inspection program from 7 to 9. Officers will be dressed in uniform and have ID present. There are three main areas that will be targeted. Around the kitchen area, uh, we'll talk about your smoke alarm and the location of them and do you test them. Um, your main TV viewing area, we just want to make sure that it's overloaded, not overloaded electrical sockets. And then down in your mechanical room around your furnace, just make sure that you have a nice clean area around your furnace of all combustibles. Fires generally happen because of careless issues and neglect. An easy way to prevent this is being aware of your surroundings and making sure if something is a fire hazard, it's being stored away properly. Fires can happen everywhere. Um, that is why during our annual or during our 
residential home inspections, uh, we like to target uh, different ways that fires have started in our community in order to mitigate uh, future ones from starting. For Primetime Local News, I'm Cassandra Hornsby. And on Thursday, there will also be an open house at Station 2. And Imperial Oil has received approval from the Alberta Energy Regulator and the Government of Alberta for an expansion northwest of Cold Lake. The city of Cold Lake is breathing a sigh of relief, says CAO Kevin Nagoya, as the expansion project is good news for the community. Cold Lake is uh, highly impacted by the jobs that are in the oil industry and oil and gas, and, uh, and this is, was a, an important item that was uh, you know, on the city of Cold Lake's radar. Imperial Oil has outlined some timelines to the city with different phase options for the project. Nagoya says they aren't sure when the whole project will come online, but they are eager to have the expansion construction begin. And a man traveling thousands of kilometers across Canada on his electric bike stopped in the border city today. So it's important that we have shared pathways and that we keep investing in that infrastructure for a cleaner, greener future, you know. Danny the Hurricane Helmo is prepared to break the Guinness World Record for the longest journey on a motorized vehicle and electric bicycle one more time. The 59-year-old and his trusty e-bike are aiming for a goal of 10,500 kilometers while promoting the use of electric vehicles. We're trying to build an electro, electric highway connections. We're putting dots on the map with places where people can ride bikes now. Uh, we've already done it with the cars. The infrastructure uh, is catching up to us now. He started on August 28th in Langley, British Columbia and has over 1,500 kilometers down. He'll be following the highway until he breaks the record. You can follow him on Facebook at Gen Z Frenzy. And now we're going to go to Brittany who is at Wine Outfitters. Nicole Dudding joins me now and we've been talking wine off camera learning all about it. Now Nicole tells me that even I would be capable enough to make my own homemade wine. Yes you would by all means you can either purchase a kit and take it home and make it yourself or you have the ability to, for us here to make it for you. So you can purchase a kit that would have all the things inside to take home and make wine in your house. Exactly. Yep. This fine little kit right here has everything that you're going to need to make wine at home. And all the other thing that you need is the wine kit itself. And now you have more than just, it's not just one red and white wine that you can make at home yourself. There's actually 120 varieties of wine that you carry here. That is correct. We have this fancy little wine guide here. And in our wine guide, we have over 120 varieties. They take anywhere from five to eight weeks in duration for us to make for you. At home, anywhere between four and seven weeks. So four to seven weeks to make my own wine. And you know, it, there's a lot of people who maybe aren't wa big wine drinkers. Do you carry like a variety of something simple? Yes, for those people that are just stepping into wine, we have a whole line called the Island Mist, which are light and fruity. In our terms here, we call it Kool-Aid with a kick. It's um, low in alcohol volume and just easy sipping. Whereas we also have Moscatos, pink Moscatos, Gwartz Demeaners, Leave for Milch. We have wine for every taste. And uh, if you are looking to make wine for Christmas, it is getting to be about that time to get on that. Yes, the countdown to Christmas is definitely on here at Lloyd Wine Outfitters. We're going to have more on that coming up a little bit later on in the show as well. We are going to actually go behind the scenes and we're going to learn how you can make wine as Nicole and some of her staff here can help you make your own wine from hand and they'll take us through uh, right through the whole process. So I'm very excited to learn how this is going to happen. But right now we're just going to head back over to the studio and check in with Michaela to find out what's going on in weather. All right, thank you so much, Brittany. It is wine making weather currently sitting at minus one. It is mostly sunny in the area. We did have quite the snowfall over the weekend and we could be seeing some more in the next few days. Unfortunately, here's a look at our satellite radar. Couple of patches of precipitation, uh, but nothing really fell into the area that could be coming tomorrow evening. As we look for our watches and warnings, none currently in effect. No frost advisories in the area at the moment. Looking at our numbers across the area, Cool, minus two in Edmonton, minus three in Edson, three degrees in Jasper, uh, minus one here in the border city. And as we move over into the Saskatchewan side, four degrees in Prince Albert, two degrees in Melfort, and three degrees in Sask uh, Saskatoon, rather. Taking a look at North Battleford. Oh, we do not have a number coming in for North Battleford. Currently overnight going to dip down to minus nine. Couple of clouds in the area as the winds come out of the east southeast. Tomorrow, mainly uh, mainly sunny rather and a high of two degrees. We 
Moving to Cold Lake, a high of two degrees currently, mix of sun and cloud. That's going to continue into tomorrow, uh, into the overnight uh, period. Minus seven for the low. Tomorrow, sunshine and a high of four degrees. And then as we look to Lloydminster, currently sitting at minus one. Winds coming out of the south southeast. Overnight, dipping down to minus nine. It's going to feel more like minus 15 once we do factor in the wind, so it is going to be quite chilly. Tomorrow, a high of two degrees, a mix of sun and clouds, mostly sunny. Now, tomorrow evening is when we have that chance of precipitation. We could see some on and off snow activity into Thursday morning. So tomorrow, a high of only minus one, minus nine for the, uh, the overnight low, and that's when we could see the snow coming in into Thursday. One degree for the high there, minus eight, and then Friday again 70 a 70 percent chance of a rain snow mix on and off throughout the day a high of five degrees there so we are going to be significantly warmer minus two for the low I'll have more details on this coming up a little bit later including your seven day forecast Welcome back. Well, damp grain is no good when it comes to getting quality on the grain train. So let's find out how a local grain dealer is managing the wet situation. Braiding the grain is just one of the quality control issues at Vicara Lloyd Minster, which has been up and running since 1995. But with the weather conditions, moisture has been the bigger problem. For canola, average dry is 10 or below, but samples have been coming in at 10.5 to 14% moisture content. It again has to come down about four points on the top end and a couple points on the lower end. Yeah. Williams, who has been with Viterra for 19 years, speaks about the challenges of the golden cash crop. Canola is a little different. You, you want to dry it to nine because it's it's very volatile in terms of, terms of storage. Yeah, it has, has bigger problems with uh, going out of condition. Wheat needs to be about 14.5, but again, it's been reading about 15 to 19 percent. The dryer at Viterra has been running 24-7 since the start of September. The colder, wetter falls have been challenging for everybody, including, including the elevators. Two years prior to this, we ran the dryer about eight months out of each year. Yeah, so we were right into the summer with drying it takes that long because it's such a slow arduous process. For your average size, the grain truck like this 20 ton can be done in an hour. With the moisture pressures and the round the clock effort, safety remains paramount. Safety program at Viterra is number one. Uh, we're focused on what we call safe production because one doesn't uh, happen without the other. If there's no production, we have no business. If there's no safety, then uh, there's no point being here either. This grain terminal holds 27,000 metric tons. It's a triple track setup where they load from one side to the other. Williams puts the whole drying process into perspective. And what we've got basically back there is a large barbecue burner blowing hot air onto, uh, onto grain which you're drying. So it's dusty, it's organic, uh, lots of straw in there. With so much combustible material, these steps are critical in terms of monitoring to prevent a fire. The other matter is filling the grain cars. We load 112 cars on our siding and admittedly it took us about two and a half, three weeks to get the grain dried for the train sitting out behind us. To the news now, Saskatchewan's Trade Minister and its Deputy Premier are in Israel on a trade mission. Deputy Premier Gord Wyant says the week-long trip will allow them to showcase Saskatchewan's world-class agriculture sector, business environment, mineral industry and a whole lot more. Now in 2017, Saskatchewan exported more than $19 million in goods to Israel, with lentils being the top export. They'll also promote the Protein Industries Canada Supercluster. And the Saskatchewan Conservative MP says Canada concedes too much in the new trade deal between Canada, the United States and Mexico, especially with the dairy industry. Moose Jaw Lake Center Lanigan Tom Lukuski says U.S. dairy farmers will have access to the Canadian dairy market, but Canadian dairy farmers have no increased access to the U.S. market. Dairy farmers stand to lose about 3.6% of their market, although Prime Minister Justin Trudeau says they will be compensated for their expected losses. Regina Member of Parliament Ralph Goodale says in general, farmers should be glad for the New Deal as livestock and grain will be able to access the American market much easier. That's our agriculture news. Let's check those ag prices.
City Center Auto Body is proud to offer the paintless dent removal system. This works by going behind the panel, working out small dents, Lloyd Minster's trusted auto body shop for over 35 years. Well, life as a junior hockey player is impossible without the help that they receive from the Billiff families. In this week's Beyond the Boards, Josh Ryan spent some time with, on Thanksgiving with Zach Ziegler and the Kellys. Most of the Lloydminster Bobcats have a second family thanks to their billets. That has especially been the case for Zach Ziegler. Ever since day one, they brought me in and uh, treated me with like one of their own. And um, as a bill, that's all you can really ask for. I mean, we try to give Zach a home that he would get when he was away as well. Getting to know him and his family is just we want to treat him and have a warm home for him. This is the eighth season the Kellys have been billets for the Bobcats. They started by wanting to become more engaged with the community, but have also enjoyed the experience solely as a hockey family. Both of them playing hockey, and um, I mean, we like to be a part of what's going on with the Bobcats too. We enjoy watching it. That common interest made for an excellent match. He has a sense of humor, and he likes to carry on with us as well. Hockey-wise, we can all relate, and uh, if I have any problems, on ice, on ice or off ice, something I can approach them with. Like previous players who've lived with them, Zach has been a good influence on the Kelly's two boys, whose only disagreements stem from Zach cheering for the Oilers in a Maple Leaf house. Why, why, why do you trip my legs over and over, bro? <laughs> Maybe at times we butt heads with that and who's going to win the cup or whatnot. But other than that, there's never been really a moment where we've been at each other's throats or anything like that. Josh Ryan? Primetime Local Sports. Beyond the Boards is brought to you by City Center Auto Body. At City Center Auto Body, they can fix anything. Now on both sides of the border. The Lloydminster Bobcats kicked off a Thanksgiving with a 5-2 win over the Drayton Valley Thunder. The Cats trailed the Thunder 2-1 heading into the second period before a three-goal outburst kept them in control of the rest of the game. The result was a mixed bag for head coach Travis Clayton, who didn't like the start, but he did like the finish. We were sluggish and our compete level wasn't there and uh, we, we addressed that in between periods and I thought we came out uh, in the second period with more urgency and, and more execution and it led to uh, some goals for us. In addition to the offensive breakout, recently acquired goaltender Curtis Meager shined in his Lloydminster debut. He came up huge, you know, uh, he made some big saves, some timely saves, and, and that's why we brought him in, right? 35 shots against, only two, uh, two went in, that's pretty good. So uh, it's exciting to have him, all the boys love him, and uh, yeah, we're excited. The game also featured multiple fights, which the team did their best to manage. They're down, they, you know, they're frustrated, and, you know, we're going to protect our own teammates, right? So it was, uh, you know, it's not something, it's not surprising that, you know, it kind of happened. Next up for the Bobcats is a trip to Sherwood Park on Thursday to take on the Crusaders. And that's it for sports. Let's send it back to Brittany over at Wine Outfitters. Nicole joins me again, and we are talking about wine. Now, you said that the hardest part is deciding which variety you're going to make. Exactly. Here we have 120 different varieties, like I was explaining earlier, that we can make for you. And this is just one of them. But I'm just going to show you guys how it's done and how easy it is to make your own wine. All right, so we're going to make a Riesling that's from Washington. So you it's bet. a white wine for everyone at home. So we've opened up the box and now we're going to add some water. You bet. This water I'm adding in the beginning so that I can actually add in an ingredient called bentonite. Bentonite is a stabilizing agent for the wine while it undergoes primary fermentation. So here we go. All right, so you she's just, just sprinkling in. it in. Exactly, and then we give it a good stir. And like I said, this is just a stabilizing agent for the wine. Then we're going to mix in the actual varietals here. And this is 100% pure varietals of the Riesling grape. And then once we get these varietals in here, we'll top up this primary to 23 liters. Oh wow, so this is actually going quite quickly together to make the wine. Yeah, really, once you've decided which wine type you want to make, you'll be in and out of here within two minutes if we're making it. So if you are making a wine at home, you can pick up your box, take it home. But if you choose so, you could come to somewhere like Lloyd Wine Outfitters and they'll actually help you make the wine. Uh, Nicole or one of her staff would help you assist to make it and then they will ferment it here, let you bottle it here. We're going to go through the whole process today. So yeah. 
we're learning lots. And right now we're just mixing one up, so. Yeah, and then here at this stage, once we add our water in, after we've got our varietals in here, we wanna make sure our water temperature is between 22 and 24 degrees. So we'll just top this baby up. So she's just adding some more water. It actually smells quite good. I, I like, I do, yeah. s it does already smell like wine. It hasn't even fermented yet. And then this is our temperature reader here. So it is gonna tell us exactly how hot that is. It's perfect. Top it up to 23 liters, and then we'll give her a good mix. Perfect. Well, while we finish filling this up, we are just going to actually toss it back over to the studio. But don't worry, we will have more with the winemaking process coming up a little bit later on in the show. But right now, we're going to check in with Michaela to find out what's going on in the rest of this week's forecast. All right. Thank you, Brittany. Uh, looks like a lot of fun down there. Look at this beautiful shot sent to us by Lara. Gorgeous shot of the snow that came a little bit early this year. As we look to our current numbers, minus one here in the border city. Same with Marwayne, minus two in Vermilion. Getting a little colder as we move out west, minus three in Vagerville, minus three also in Edmonton. As we turn over into the Saskatchewan side, two degrees in Maidstone. And then as we move up north, two degrees in Meadow Lake, one degree in Isle of Cross. As we continue across the map here, one degree in La Lache, one degree in Buffalo Narrows, two in La Range, four in Stony Rapids, a little bit warmer up there. And as we move over into the northern side of Alberta, three degrees in Fort McMurray, same within Peace River, River rather one degree in Grand Prairie. And as we go down south, minus one in Banff, minus four in Calgary, three degrees in Medicine Hat, minus three in Lethbridge. And as we move over here, one degree in Regina, two degrees in Yorkton. And then as we look to our numbers tomorrow, we could be seeing some more snow on and off starting tomorrow night into Thursday and then again on Friday. So if we look to our numbers, same story here tomorrow in the border city, minus one, zero degrees in Vermilion, two degrees in Vagerville, warming up to four degrees in Edmonton. Just going to step off here, four degrees in St. Walberg, five degrees in Meadow Lake tomorrow. Just want to bring up our snow accumulation for the next 48 hours. There's that snow that's going to start piling up around the region in Alberta. And then as you can see, it is coming into a force. Starting on Friday, we are going to see some on and off snow starting uh, tomorrow evening into Friday. For the kids catching the bus tomorrow, minus 9 degrees at 8 a.m. Going to feel more like minus 15, though. Recess time, minus 7. Lunchtime warming up to minus 3. The sun is going to come back out, though. Home time should be around minus 1, so you're definitely going to want to put on a warm jacket tomorrow. Tomorrow, mix of sun and cloud, minus 1 for the daytime high, minus 9, which is going to feel more like minus 15 in those early hours of the morning. And that's when we could see the snow start overnight into Thursday. One degree there, minus 8 for the uh, for the low, and then Friday, on and off snow, 70% chance there. 5 degrees for the high, minus 2 for the low, and then as we move into the weekend, minus 1. 4 degrees on Sunday, so we are warming back up, but we do have a 50% chance we could see a rain-snow mix. Monday, 7 degrees, so that's we are getting significantly warmer than we are currently. Zero degrees for the low there. And next Tuesday, five for the high and minus three for the low. And now we're going to head to check back in with Brittany, who is at Wine Outfitters. All right, Nicole and I are back and we are at Lloyd Wine Outfitters and we are going to turn water into wine. It's basically magic. Exactly. Now here's your opportunity. Just sprinkle that right on top. So what is this exactly so that I'm adding? This is the yeast that we're adding to this wine. This was a Washington Riesling that in the last segment we just mixed up. So now she's going to sprinkle the magic and... Okay, well I'm going to just sprinkle it in. It actually smells really good. I, it just kind of smells like grape juice, but yeah. it smells delicious. Sprinkle in my yeast. And that's it. So I've officially turned water into wine. Just that We're easy. getting close. So you don't have to stir it or anything nope. after this? Now it just sits just like that. And from here, we're going to bring it back here. I'm not going to carry it right now, but I'll show you what we do. From here, we go back here into our production area. This is where all the magic happens. So this is where, from there, we will bring it up to the top shelf there, where it'll sit in primary fermentation for two weeks. It'll then get racked down there to the middle shelf, where it'll undergo secondary fermentation. We'll add a few clarifying agents. And then it'll sit there for another two weeks. After that point, we'll rack it down to the bottom shelf there, which is where it will sit until just before filtration. And then once it's filtered off, you'll get to come back to our equipment and facility to bottle it off. Take it home to enjoy. 
And now, so if you wanted to take your home, your wine home, you could do this all yourself or you could come here and get that set up and then go through the process with a little bit of extra help. Exactly. Yeah. We, all you have to do is sprinkle your yeast, come back and bottle it off. The dirty work is left here to us. And so you said it's five to seven weeks, depending on the type of wine? Five to eight weeks, actually. So we have a line, our Ventures Reserve and our World Vineyard that are ready in five. We have our Selection that are ready in seven. And we have our Eclipse wine, which are definitely our cream of the crop here that are ready in eight weeks. So depending on which wine you want, is depends on the duration that it takes us to make for you. Wow, that's really interesting. Yeah. And we're going to have more coming up from Nicole later on in the show. But right now we're going to head back over to the studio and check in with Michaela to find out what's going on in our social media trends. All right, well, today's question of the day stems from uh, next week. Officially, cannabis will be legal all across Canada. So uh, with it being eight days away, we wanted to know, do you think we are ready? There's a lot of confusion as to who will be able to sell it and where. You know, it's all a little hazy at the moment. But hazy. Uh, there we go, yeah. 83% <laughs> of you on our Twitter say we are ready. So I don't know. What do you guys think? You think uh, Canada's ready to light one up? I like your choice of word hazy. <laughs> That's a high conversation. Oh, we go in there. No. No, no you're not. No. We're not ready. No. <laughs> okay, just a no. <laughs> what about you, Connor? You think I we're think, ready? Well, I want to say yes, but I know realistically, I think no as well. There are things that that still need to be detailed in terms of workplace stuff and everything, yeah. but. I think there's a lot of people that have been waiting a long time for this, though. Yeah, and I sure. just want to read some of the comments we got on our Facebook page. Uh, Daniel says, for the life of me, I don't understand this. We knew this was going to be in the works at least two years ago. I'm not very happy with people saying there wasn't enough time. How much more time do you need? So it was a campaign problem. And then Don on our Facebook says he's been ready since 1974. So <laughs> he is ready to, to go. What's the Yeah. <laughs> well, we still do have time for you to weigh in on our question of the day. Let us know your thoughts on the matter on our Facebook or Twitter or Instagram page, uh, like always. But right now, it's time for our Pet of the Day segment, and we have some good ones. So here we go. This is Pablo. Pablo <laughs> the uh, Pomeranian. This was sent to us by Don. Super cute. Yeah. And then next we have Nova. This was sent to us by Summer. Really adorable beagle there. And then look at this. This is a baby shark. This is Daisy. Aww. And this is sent to us by Heather. And I got everyone stuck with the shark song because this amazing photo. <laughs> and then uh, next we have Milo. And Milo is in the baby bath chair. Super cute. That was sent to us by Laura. And then last but certainly not least, this is Bishop. And this was sent to us by Debbie. If your photo was chosen, you will be enter to win a gift card to pet pad so make sure you send us your photo of your pets to our pet pad uh, for it to be entered to our pet pad giveaway we want to see your pets send photos of your pet and their name to our facebook twitter or instagram to have them featured on pet of the day your name will be entered into a weekly draw for a gift certificate from the pet pad Furniture set and design supplied by Furniture Gallery and Furniture House, downtown Lloydminster. Chantelle Bisson is back with us this hour, and this time we're going to be focusing on relationships. And Chantelle, you talk about putting your oxygen mask on first, and, and what does that mean to you? Well, to me, it means not losing your identity in your relationship and not becoming the other person. I mean, I don't know if you saw a few months ago, there was this joke meme going around of how Brad Pitt took on looking like exactly every woman right. he ever did. <laughs> um, and that's quite to the extreme, obviously, if you're going to actually physically start to look like your partner. But I think it's really, really important inside of a relationship to keep your own identity, keep your own interests, keep your own set of friends, and get your own alone time within the relationship. And, and to be sure that... When something doesn't feel right or, it, you know, is not fulfilling you in the relationship, not being afraid to vocalize that in a respectful way to let your partner know that, hey, you know, there's a problem here for me. I'm not feeling great right now. I'm not feeling like I'm flourishing in this relationship anymore. And can we work together to get back to the point where I feel like this relationship is mutually beneficial to me as it is to you? 
Now, what can happen and how can things and how quickly do you think things can, can kind of start to fall apart if you don't do this and if you kind of ignore things until they get to a point where you've either kind of given up or stopped caring or, you know, it's just like, well, I'm just going to go on in my day and whether I'm happy or not. Yeah, well, again, I think this it all bears on the tolerance for the person. You know, everybody, everybody's built differently and wired differently, and some people can be that camel a lot longer. You know, it takes them a lot longer mm -hmm. to become the, for the straw that breaks their back to appear. So um, I think it really depends on the relationship and what you feel like you're getting out of it. Because I know for me inside my relationship with Yannick, there have been times where it's like so much of it is going really, really well, but there's that little nagging thing that's not, not working for me. And then right. you're hesitant right. to actually even bring it up because you feel like, am I making a mountain out of a molehill here? Because so much of the relationship is really, really thriving and beautiful and wonderful. But there's this one thing over here that's really not working for me. And is it really worth to bring it up? And when I do bring it up, is it going to be an explosion or is there going to be a solution? So um, I think it's about knowing your own tipping point and not getting past that. So what would you give uh, as advice to someone who is in that exact situation that you just described, Chantel? Um, if they don't quite know what the effects are, are going to be, should, should you push it or kind of, you know, I guess weigh the temperature of the situation? Well, depends on which day you get me on. <laughs> <laughs> Every day, I'm just going to push it. Um, and then I think, you know, as I'm as I'm growing older and 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 working more on myself, and I think that's really important in a relationship is to take a step back when you are in a you are in upset. Mm -hmm. Is to step back and be like, hmm, is this really about my partner or is this me? Am I am I seeing this situation through my own lens and am I reading it through my own story or is this a reality? Like is is this is this really happening in real time or am I conjuring it up through my own lens? And I think when you ask yourself those questions, it you, you, you diffuse some of the fire and you diffuse some of the passion out of it. And then you can then go back to the situation in a day or two and, and address it in a, in a calmer way that, you know, you're not going to have a huge blow up out of it. And you might end up with a very, very, very positive outcome for both parties. All right, well, thank you, Chantel. And one thing I would like to mention is that when uh, Chantel speaks to us here on the newscast, she also connects some articles with further information on this on her website. So please check out ChantelBisson.com. And Chantel, we will see you again next week. Great, I look forward to it. Nicole is busy working behind me. She's busy bottling up a Zinfandel Cabernet that was done in a bourbon barrel. So it's a little bit of a special blend. Now we've taken you through the whole process today. It turned water into wine. We went through and looked at where wine gets fermented and now through the bottling process. And it's really neat that you can customize your label and pick out the size of a bottle you want. So thank you so much for joining me on that tour. I think this might have been one of my favorite spots to visit. Now tomorrow I'm going to be in studio on the couch joining Michaela and uh, Gerard is going to be down at the Lloyd X having the appreciation night for Jerry Ritz which should be great so tune in tomorrow thank you so much for joining me and right now we're going to head back over to the studio and check in with them all right, we're kind of jealous we didn't get to go on that wine excursion. You better bring some yeah, back here. Yeah, that would be nice. Uh, temperatures for the next uh, week here, we're going to go to only minus 1 tomorrow, minus 9 for the low. We could see some snow overnight into Thursday morning. One degree on Thursday and Friday is when that snow is going to be coming. 70% chance there. 5 degrees though for the high, minus 2 for the low. And then Saturday, cloudy, much like we saw over the weekend. What, minus 1 for the high there, minus 7 for the low. And then Sunday, 50% chance we could see a rain snow mix yet again. 4 degrees for the high there, but warming it up on Monday to 7 degrees, a 0 for the low. 5 degrees next Tuesday and minus 3 for the low to finish off the 7 day forecast. And I know that's not the forecast our nope. farmers want to hear because they were having nope. a tough time this weekend. Yeah, the words of encouragement I'm hearing for folks right now. Remember the reason why you first started what you're doing right now. There you go. Some words of encouragement for our farmers. I got nothing else. Yeah, hopefully we can get this snow to leave, but we're going to leave it there, everyone. Have a great yeah. night. We'll see you here tomorrow.